The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And folks, we got a two way market, man. We have had some higher prices since last Thursday. You're talking about an S&P that trades from 3,500 up to 3,777. We make that high early yesterday. We come into that high just towards the close. We accelerate. Last night, even at 7 o'clock, you see the acceleration even after hours. Strong numbers from Netflix. We'll jump over to Netflix in a moment. We make it right back up to about 37.70. And then the S&Ps, folks, they trade down almost 2% from where we were last night. It was quite an upside market. You give up almost 60 points from where we were trading at last night at 37.11. We just made lows in the last 15 minutes coming into the lows that we had yesterday. We got some action in currencies, man. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. Great day to have him on when we got some dollar action going on. And he's got a webinar coming up a week from today. We'll talk about that as well on the front page of TFNN. Let's jump over to the dollar index, man. You talk about a move. You go to bed last night at 112. You wake up this morning at 113. Just that quick, folks. Dollar strength in a big way. We jump over to notes and bonds. Lower price. Higher yield coming at you in the 10-year. You talk about a move, man. Just moves everywhere right now. The 10-year, say goodbye to 4.1%. We are above that price level. Uh, we are above that yield level, I should say, as the 10-year almost got a 109 handle. Take a look at the daily, folks. That's a low. It's a lower low. We are almost sitting at lows. You're looking at a 10-year of 4.11%. 4.11%, the yield on the 10-year. Absolutely wild as the move continues. You jump over to the 30-year. That's making a new low as well. We're down a full point and 14 ticks in the 30-year at 122.04. I talked about the dollar index. You put that thing on a daily basis, just well within the channel line. Now, we've been talking about the euro, right? We talked about it yesterday, man. We talked about the channel line. Look at the reversal right at that channel line. You put this thing on a 15-minute. You basically rolled over right as you got into that yesterday, right? You touched it early, early yesterday. Now, we don't have volume, so it's a little bit. But this is about 3 a.m. Tuesday. We were back into this level right during my program because I was talking about it. You got up to that level last night as well. And then finally, you sell off from 98.5, almost down a full point, to 97.7 in the euro U.S. dollar. You jump over to the pound, pound down to 112.34. Now, pound a little bit of a different action going on as you're actually coming down to the bottom part not quite as well defined on the pound as they have their own issues going on for sure you talk about your own issues man dollar yen it's not stopping folks uh to the upside we go you're pushing almost 150 right now that impacting of course commodities gold down $18 to 1637 the low recently on gold 1622 we were just at a price tag on gold of 1734 you give up about 100 bucks over the last two weeks in the price of the gold contract I mean look at we can just keep jumping around man you jump over to the VIX there's action everywhere in this market folks the VIX is actually the thing that doesn't have as much action going on right look at the action we have overnight in the dollar index, in notes and bonds. Look at the reversal we have going on in the S&Ps right now, okay? Yeah, it is dwarfed, folks, by the move we've had since Thursday. But what is that? Let's look it up exactly. We're dealing with some funny money percentages, folks, when you're talking about 275.25 points is the low of Thursday to the high of yesterday, and that on a percentage basis is 7.86% from low to high this market. And just like that, though, we give up almost 75 points. That's a 2% pullback from where we were early yesterday. That's a 70-point pullback from where we were at 930. Now, we've gone over those numbers, but I reiterate those numbers when you look at the VIX. Because what's going on in the VIX? The VIX is just staying right at 31, 32 right now. Uh, no matter what is happening in this market, I mean, look at the moves we've had in the market. I just told you from where we were Thursday, okay, yeah, we've dropped from 33 to 31, 33.50 to 31.50. Friday, we were back almost at 33. Yesterday, we were almost at 32. And meanwhile, we've got an 8% move low to high. We've got a 2% pullback, 
okay? Uh, a VIX of 32 represents a move of 2% every one out of three days. You could make the argument right now that the VIX is underpriced with the type of action we have going on in this market. Okay, lots to talk about this morning. Let's jump over to Netflix. Netflix out with their numbers last night. And they beat. They pull back a little bit with the market this morning. 278, they spiked to last night. They're back to 265.72. Now, they added 2.41 million subscribers. That's probably the biggest data point out of that last night. Jumping over to their numbers, Netflix, pulling up the headline, returns to growth. Added 2.41, and they're looking for more than 4 million the next quarter as well. So the streamer added 2.41 million customers in the third quarter. The market was looking for something like a million, maybe a little bit more. They grew in all regions of the world, and they expect to sign up another 4.5 million globally this period. Uh, yeah, they had a quote in here. Now, this one's a strong one, man. Thank God we're done with shrinking quarters. Well, hopefully he's pretty confident because if they come back to shrinking quarters in the next quarter or two, that quote is going to be brought up. So would be something that... Hopefully, he would say if he just had the confidence to say it, and maybe that is the strength, that they are returning uh, and no longer shrinking quarters. That was during a webcast interview. And, yeah, they've gotten pummeled recently, man. But a strong slate of fresh programs attracted millions of new viewers in the third quarter. Uh, new episodes of Stranger Things was in there to start things off. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? I mean, Dave White was talking about this yesterday. And Stranger Things, definitely, I actually haven't watched the final season of that yet. Interesting, right? I've watched every season up to it. I probably will. Time is valuable, folks. I don't have all the time in the world watching TV. That's pretty low on the totem pole, thankfully, in terms of priorities in life and where my time goes. Uh, I'm watching House of Dragons right now. That's a good one, man. If you're into Game of Thrones, you haven't watched House of Dragons on HBO, check it out. And HBO, actually has a great deal. You can save 40% if you sign up for the year, which is not bad if you use it. They get some great programs on there, but not a ton in terms of what they're pushing out there to really drive people in. And they still added that many subscribers to blow away the expectations. Revenue grew to 7.93 billion, beating analyst projections and profit was a big beat too. 310 versus a share versus $2 and change the market was looking for. They're still on pace for the slowest growth, slowest growth in years. Yeah, but that's a turnaround from what the market was thinking, folks. And where it shifts to there is what happens with their ad-supported tier. They kind of just went public, so we'll see where that goes. We jumped to some of the other streamers. Disney got a lift last night on those numbers. They're going to pull back a little bit this morning, down to about 100 from 98. Uh, let's see how some of the others. Warner Brothers Discovery, they catch a little bit of a lift as well. Yeah, Paramount gets a little bit of a lift. They pull back as well. The other one out this morning, how about United, man? I just saw an interview with the United CEO on Bloomberg earlier this morning talking about his numbers. He was talking about Boeing as well, man. Talking about that, those planes. Take a look at Boeing. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. That channel line, I've left it on the chart, but broke well below it. Not really intact to any degree. Broke out of that thing in April of this year. And you're in trouble on Boeing, man. But United, they seemed like they wanted to buy Boeing planes if they could. Now, United, let's see. we got two Fibonacci lines. Let's let's take these off for some clarity here. Now, this does not show today's action, which is going to lift it to right about 40. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, man. So check it out. We're coming into an area, as my dad would say, maybe ice. We're coming into that area, an area of support, an area of resistance. We're going to talk to our man, Kevin Hinks. When we get back, folks, we'll talk to him about a little United. Get his take as well. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures negative by 22 points right now, trading at 37.10. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by about 73, trading down 6 tenths percent at 11,125. Let's jump over to, our, over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market at noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, they do an outstanding program, folks. They talk about the markets. They talk about options. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. And, man, we are coming into the thick of earnings season. And, Kevin Hanks, man, we got some currencies. We got the dollar strength. We got the market rolling over. But earnings, man, we got Netflix beaten. We got United higher today. We got Procter, Procter & Gamble higher today as well. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. And happy 35th anniversary of the 1987 crash. So Ooh, I'm sure you dad knows where he was knows where he was that day i'm not sure if you do but i do <laughs> and i'm sure your father does tommy maybe i was in what grade would i be in what's a seven-year-old in uh, are they in first grade by then maybe some kicking around pretty interesting man uh i'm sure <laughs> i know right yeah. time amazing anyway, man when we look at today go no further than if you have alerts on your phone for economic data, your phone probably went off around 2 o'clock Eastern when the U.K. CPI data came out. And it came out hotter than expected, Tommy. And that's when the dollar rallied. That's when yields firmed up. And that is, even though we have, you're right, great news out of uh, Netflix, kind of a relief rally that you're seeing in Netflix, great news out, out of United Airlines, airline strength continuing to be strong, and great news out of Procter & Gamble with their organic growth of set, sales growth of 7%. But, Tommy, as you know, we trade a macro uh, economy right now, and U.K. year-over-year -year CPI coming out at 10.1% was a bit alarming. For most people. And so their month over month data was 0.5. That's higher than the 0.4. So the two numbers for CPI in the UK, which 
whether you wanted to or not, all these economies are related. Uh, inflation is not under control right now, Tommy. That's why you see yields where they are. That's why you see the dollar where it is. And stocks going to have a tough time today. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the numbers persist, to say the least, man. Um, and you have some Fed speak out there today. You had Kashkari out there. One of the headlines I saw, I just pulled it up on Bloomberg, saying um, can't pause rate hikes with core inflation accelerating. And, man, core, I mean, we talk about, we've talked about it, Kevin. Shelter price is a big part of that. We're seeing mortgage rates. I think I saw another headline right now. Yeah, I got it. Nine, uh, 6.94. I see one. Mortgage rates. The U.S. extends the highest since 2002. Interesting to see how our CPI is going to shape up when you hear Fed speak like that, because that shelter component can lag. And man, we got some high mortgage prices, as we've talked about it, some pretty interesting issues. Um, but yeah, dollar last night, go to bed at 112. You wake up this morning, you're at 113. And that yen, yen's about to blow through 150, man. Commodities trading lower. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we march forward. What are you guys talking about at 12 o'clock on Fast Market coming up today? As you know, Tommy, in earnings season, the shows write themselves. So today, Tesla. IBM, LAM Research, three great names all coming out with earnings after the bell today. That's a lineup, man. Tesla, IBM, the checkout Tesla, too. What did you do? I mean, what, what volatility, Kevin, in this market in general? I said to you yesterday from the, the low of Thursday to the high yesterday, just in the S&Ps, three or four days, you're pushing almost an 8% move, folks. And Tesla, I mean, boy, you got a 15% move, Kevin, almost from Friday to the 230 action. And then IBM, man, been struggling. You pull up IBM 123 right now. You put that on the weekly uh, up just above 140, but we'll see where that goes. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you taking the time on a busy day as always, man. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk Talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. You too. Folks, tune in every trading day. We are coming into earnings season, man. These hypothetical trades they set up. Folks, even if you don't want to trade options, understanding how they are priced, understanding how they trade, understanding how the premium is priced into them, that can give you a wealth of knowledge, even if you're just trading equities, especially when you come into an earnings season. I mean, for example, we've talked about it many times, but if you've never heard it, you jump over to Tesla. Okay, Tesla, you talk about a pullback back to 220 right now. You've just come into the lows we had from May, right? The low in May, 206. The low in June, 208. We just got down to a price level of 204. We're back to 220 right now on Tesla. But you jump over to the Analyze tab, folks. You've got the earnings coming out after the bell. You've got an expected move, okay, of $13.55, and that is the move that is priced around earnings alone. Okay, now that move comes from the premium that is priced into the options when you talk about the expected move of implied volatility. Now, you want action just through the earnings event today? That's $13.55. Uh, if you plan on holding the weekly, uh, weekly options that expire through Friday, then you're talking about an implied move of $17 in either direction. You see the plus or minus, okay? That's saying, if you're paying premium here to be the buyer of these options, okay? And let's just put them right at the money. And you want action, okay, on the bullish side, if you're buying calls, excuse me, the left, if you're at the money of about 220 as of the close of yesterday, okay, then you're paying about almost nine bucks. You want the same action on the downside, you're paying almost nine bucks. That gets you to almost $18, and that's where you get the implied volatility. So if you're an equity holder and you're coming into this earnings event, okay, are you comfortable with Tesla potentially moving an implied volatility move of about $17 this week alone? Because that's just a reasonable amount that this thing can move up or down. You're risking it to the downside. You're risking it to the upside. That's the move the market is pricing in. Uh, and it goes much deeper than that when you talk about the delta, the gamma of all of that. Check out the program, folks. They're talking about three great stocks. Uh, Tesla, IBM. Tesla's got some volatility. Let's see the move on IBM coming up for their numbers. IBM, you're talking about about a 5% move for IBM. We jump over to the earnings. When are they out? They are out today after the bell as well. Yeah, and LAM Research, right? LRCX, I believe. They're out with it after the bell. They're talking about a 5% move for LAM Research as well. And boy, you talk about a pullback, man. 731 to 322. And this thing pricing at about a $16 move for their numbers after the bell as well. It's going to be an interesting open, folks. This dollar index, checking out the dollar index. We've backed off a bit. 112.72. We take a look at the notes and bonds. Yeah, no, a little bit of a back off, you could say. Pretty remarkable that we make lower lows after where we've been. You put this thing on the daily, right? 
Where did that reprieve come from June to the highs of August? Folks, we're 10 weeks later, and you had the 10-year down 12 full points with very little reprieve over that time. Now, what I will say is, folks, eventually this market will roll over, all right? The dollar yen eventually will have some red days somewhere in it, uh, but not sure that's the case just yet. But we have a treat because we'll, we'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour, folks. And as I referenced, he's doing a webinar a week from today. Great time to do a webinar. You can sign up for the Tiger Forex report on the front page of TFNM. We'll talk to Teddy at about 40 past the hour, and we'll get into all those currencies. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we kick things off. Amazon, they're lower with the market. Now, Amazon is very rate sensitive, man. This thing has 6% moves like it's nothing right now with what's going on with yields. You were as high as 119. You're going to give up $4 in the pre-market. You're at 114.78. You're going to be down about 50. The one quote I did say, Bezos out there on social media, I guess, and not sounding too optimistic, man. As he's, and where does he does it? Do it? He replies to a tweet. No, where is it? Come on. Load for me. There it is. We'll bring this up when we get back. Probabilities in this economy tell you to batten down the hatches as he retweets Goldman Sachs CEO. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now, negative by 21 points, quite a rollover overnight. But you heard Kevin Hinks, man. It's a world economy, folks, and currencies, boy. They are shaping everything. I keep jumping ahead of them, ahead of our interview with Teddy, but you can't help but see where they're moving because they had such an impact overnight, folks, from 112 to 113 in the dollar index. We've got notes moving in dramatic fashion right now with the 10-year making new lows at 110. We're back at about 110.07 right now. Yeah, so jumping back real quick before I jump in some other news. Uh, so Bezos, I mean, pay attention, man. You know, you don't you don't see CEOs of some of the biggest companies in the world talking about battening down the hatches and recession unless they probably think that way because that is not self-serving in terms of retail, et cetera. Um, but he's out there and he's talking about David Solomon retweeting an interview uh, segment clip that he had in terms of a good chance at a recession. Uh, nonetheless, it is what it is, I guess, at this point. So Spirit, they approve. Uh, shareholders approve a takeover by JetBlue, ending a six-month battle to create the country's fifth largest carrier. Now they have to go to regulators and see if that will get approved. The airlines now must convince them that that agreement won't harm competition and drive up fares for consumers. I don't know how it doesn't. <laughs> to be honest, uh, they got a lot of flights around the northeast and the and the eastern side of the, the country. Uh, taking a look real quick, I was just Googling this stuff, flightconnections.com. I guess that talks about all of them. JetBlue, okay, backing out a bit. You can see very heavy up in the northeast, right? They got New York, New Jersey. They got a big hub in Boston. Check it out when you talk about where you're going out of Boston. I remember when they first started, folks. When I first got down here, almost in 2005 or so, I wonder when the, the routes originally began because think about that man that's 17 years ago you think you're like new right um but i remember when they were first starting fares man they were pumping out fares for like nothing 59 bucks when they were first beginning routes and there's still sometimes you find 99 bucks when you're talking about boston to tampa you talk about spirit okay spirit they got a lot up and down the eastern seaboard as well. You take take a look at Boston, Boston to Tampa is a route. Many, many less flights out of Boston, but you see the general departures in terms of the northeast the southeast uh spirit going further west with more flights it seems and maybe down there but nonetheless they overlap a lot folks um so very difficult to see how that wouldn't hurt consumers if it's going to help the business in some degree and jet blue has just been a disaster man we jump over to their chart they get a lift today probably on um that maybe i guess but check out this chart folks <sighs> I mean, I haven't even checked on this thing recently, and it's making new lows of 621 last week. Man, talk about blowing it. That's below. Imagine trading below when March 23rd, we didn't know if the world would ever be the same and we would travel the same way as we had, right? And that's where JetBlue is. So I wouldn't be so quick to think that that's going to be the deal. And there's spirit. Spirit. I mean, yeah, these airlines are all kind of in the gutter compared to where they were pre-pandemic, but none of them are really near where you were on the lows of the pandemic, right? Most of them are double that valuation, at least. United, they're up 5.4% on their numbers. Delta right now, trading at 32. The low was 17 back then. Delta's up 1.7, still pretty low. But then you look at JetBlue, they're in a class of their own, man, to the downside. So be careful. Catching a lift of 1.5% in the market. They catch a little bit of a lift on the open for the market. You're up about 15 points from where we open. There's a pop for you at 37.23 right now. We jump over to crude, trading in an 82 handle, 82.70 after trading down to 81.30 yesterday for the price of crude. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other headlines. I referenced it to Kevin. Mortgage rates, 6.94%, the highest since 2002. That's a 30-year fixed contract rate. It's risen for nine straight weeks. The index of applications to purchase, refinance, lowest since 1997. Shouldn't be surprising, man. And look at that spike, right? I mean, you got to go back when? 2002? Is that the last time that we were there, man? Pretty remarkable. And uh, mortgage applications, obviously related, but taking a deep dive to that level. I mean, we've just been so low for so long that I think it's going to be really hard and yeah, the Mortgage News Daily, which updates more frequently, 7.15% right now, folks. And you know what? That's not, let me see. It's, yeah, look, I don't know where this data comes from, okay? But you want a shocker, man. Just Google 30-year mortgage rates. I got 7.62% on whatever Google's throwing my way, man. Is that from Bankrate? Where is this? 
Isn't this amazing that Google can put this up, right? And I don't even know where this data is coming from, right? It's showing me a chart. Where is this chat? Where is this from? Maybe the maybe bank rate. No, they're showing a 30-year fixed at 7.08%. Uh, still bonkers numbers to the upside, man. That's going to impact everything. And you know what you have to pay attention to as well. Yeah, and my dad's texting me as we as we speak, folks. Um, and they're adding points on top of it. So that's not even a real rate. That they're adding points on top of the fixed rate that you're getting in there that you're paying. So it's quite a shift to the upside, to say the least. And that would make sense. When you get the 10-year pushing 4.1%, the 30-year is going to be at least 7%, at least, if not much higher to that degree. But market's catching a little bit of a lift right now with the S&Ps only down about 4. Let's jump through some of the other headlines I had pulled up here. Let's see. What do we got? No, not that one. Yeah, jumping back to this one. So we speak about prices. Nestle. Warn shoppers to brace for more price increases, folks. Now, they have been able to transfer this pretty well. Volume of goods sold eased by 0.2% in the third quarter as Nestle raised prices 9.5%. Until now, consumers have been willing to absorb higher costs despite a bike spike in inflation that squeezed budgets across the board. Uh, it hasn't passed on all its higher input costs, they say. The impact of higher energy... OK, it's stifling demand for some of it. Now, their margins, I was reading this earlier. Yeah, the group confirmed it's 17 percent operating margin. Pretty decent, though. That's the target for the year. That would be the second consecutive annual decline. So they're seeing seeing declining margins. Think about that. They're raising prices 9.5 percent. And they're talking about declining margins on the second year in a row. Uh, they're facing some big issues across the board, though, whether you talk about currencies, whatever it is. Now, they make a ton of stuff. Nestle, it's not just Nestle chocolate, bar, chocolate bars. They got Purina pet food. They have Nespresso coffee pods, among many others. Full year revenue growth, about 8%. Now, they're raising prices 9.5%, though, right? The top end of the previous range, the group confirmed, uh, yeah, and the operating margin declining for the second straight year. But nonetheless, they're able to raise them. We'll see if they can keep raising them, folks, as the... People become a little bit aware of the tightening economy and tightening up their own belt. I talked about this briefly as well. And this is, you solve this one, man, you solve everything, okay? Uh, but we got some Fed speak out there today. And you have Minneapolis Fed Chief Neil Kashkari. And he's been a bit of a hawk. Uh, but he's saying core services, which is the stickiest of all, keeps climbing. And we keep getting su su surprised on the upside. Yeah, if we don't see progress... In underlying inflation or core inflation, I don't see why I would advocate stopping at 4.5 or 4.75. If you start seeing a lot of that, folks, watch out, because that's a strong statement, man. Um, and it's, it's, it's a reasonable opinion, to say the least, folks. If you're seeing that sticky inflation, why would you stop, right? There's an argument to be made that there may be some lag. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. It should be a good segment. We got some currency action. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps. They give back that little pop we just got right now. You're negative by 20 points, trading at 37.12. We jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index right now. You give back some of that as well. Still positive by 62 pennies right now at 112.75. We take a look at the yen. Dollar yen right now, 149.74, almost sitting at the highs. And, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report right on the front page of TFNN, folks. He publishes a report weekly every Monday. You can sign up for that, and we got a treat because a week from today, folks, he'll be hosting a webinar at 4 p.m. Eastern time for subscribers. You can sign up for the Tiger Forex report. You gain access to the newsletter, which is an outstanding letter in itself. It's $97 for a month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee no matter what. You'll gain access to the webinar coming up a week from today at 4 p.m. That will be archived if you can't attend live. You get the newsletter for a month. If it's just not up your alley, you don't trade for whatever reason, you're not into it. Uh, and, folks, there is so much great information. You're seeing what happens in currencies right now, man. The market is kind of uh, promoting this thing itself with the impact the dollar's having on the markets across the board. But check it out, folks, front page of TFNN, and we're going to talk to Teddy right now, find out about that webinar. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How about that U.S. dollar yen trade? I said, you know, what? It's, it seems like it's always a great day to have you on, Teddy, man. But we know, you know, you've given us an education. Uh, these currencies, they are driving so much of what's going on in this market. And before we jump into the dollar, Teddy, because I want to talk to you about it all, man. How about the yen pushing 150? We got a lot of gold traders out there, gold negative today. But if you could mm -hmm. real quick, talk us through what you're going to be going through and what you've put together for the subscribers of the Tiger Forex Report next Wednesday. Uh, sure. So next Wednesday, we're going to have a one hour webinar and we're basically going to go over like how I do the uh, put the Tiger Forex report together. We're going to look at the markets that influence the U.S. dollar and other currency pairs. And then we'll break down where they're at, where those trends are and what kind of influence they should have on the different currency pairs that we're going to talk about, which will be all your major ones like the pound, the euro, the yen and the Aussie, the New Zealand and the Canada. It's awesome, man. I can't wait. Um, subscribers, I'm sure it'll be some Definite value, to say the least. And let's jump into it, man. Last night, how about mm -hmm. that dollar index, right? You go to sleep at 112 and you wake up at 113 and the market obviously reacts. What's your take on, on the dollar as we kick things off? 
Well, very strong. It's not hard to believe it because, I mean, look at the, the bond, the 30 year bonds and the 10 year notes. You know, I mean, if you look on a weekly chart of both of them, they've been in the red for, you know, this is going on, you know, since the beginning of the summertime. There is no Wild. Up, yeah. up week whatsoever. You know, and even on the daily basis, we've made new lows again. So I think that is definitely driving the surge. It's definitely helping to help lift the U.S. dollar yen um, to uh, towards 150. Now we've had a 150 price target since the beginning of the summer, and I, I was looking for it to be the end of October, beginning of November. So now we're we're butting up against that right now. I would use caution <clears throat> if you're already long. Keep your stops tight and look for a correction, a pullback. I would look at, to be a buy dip kind of scenario for if you're not in the trade i would wait to buy it lower i wouldn't try and jump in right now i'm not afraid of buying new highs or selling new lows but in this situation i would use caution as we hit the 150 level because i mean we could easily see i mean we had just a month and a half ago you know a seven handle range that happened in the course of just over an hour in the u.s dollar yen so if the algos kick and the stops start to really get run you know if the dollar has any type of reversal day you might see a three four handle pullback back in the U.S. dollar yen. So you got to be prepared for that. It's a great point. I mean, the moves are just so large right now. Even when I pulled up the S&P, I had said to our man Kevin Hinks, Teddy, I talked to him Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And from the time I talked to him Thursday this Tuesday, the S&P was up almost 8%, man. 8% mm -hmm. from Thursday to Tuesday. So uh, point being, right, you get some pullbacks. And man, the market is just moving everywhere. Uh, what about crude, Teddy, as we pull back to about 82 bucks? We've seen quite a little pullback in the last, uh, what, five, eight days in crude as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. You know, this crude has definitely stabilized over the past couple of months. But I don't see it as being a bear. I see this as just being an ex you know, extended little range trade that's going on for the oil market. I can't see how we would trend lower into the holidays and the new year. Like I don't see us going from where we're at going down to say like seventy, sixty five dollars, something like that over the next few months. I see us going back up above a hundred actually by Christmas time or New Year's. And how, for the listeners that haven't heard you talk about it, and maybe this is something that you could even talk about, and maybe you plan on it when you talk about the mm -hmm. webinar, but you've given such a great education in crude, and especially how that relates to um, producing countries like mm -hmm. the U.S., and then how that ties to a country like Japan. Um, could you just talk about that a little bit and how that's shaping kind of what's going on in this market right now, or if that's one of the impacts you're talking about? Where is that in the, in the conversation that you look as you look at the dollar, especially with the yen? Well, you know what? Yeah, that's actually a really good question, uh, especially because now we have this talk coming out of Washington that our president wants to put a ban on exporting oil. You know, so if they do that, that means that that's really going to impact the price of oil globally. And I think that would also lift the U.S. dollar yen even much higher than it is because we su we supply oil around the world. Japan's one of our allies and we do send oil that way. You know, so if we now start saying we're no longer going to export, you know, that means that global supply is going to there's going to be a supply chain issue with that you know i mean okay. we are we're already not the net exporter like we were you know but we definitely still are exporting oil if yeah. we shut off those those lines of you know energy i think that the us dollar yen could see probably an extra 10 dollar rally i mean we could there's there's no intervention coming from the japanese i'm stunned i mean i said this already you know 6 months ago when they had the first you know speak about saying how they were going to defend their currency when it was trading in the 120s you know and they said 130 was the line in the sand and then they had a couple weeks back where we had that big day with the you know where they said oh we're going to finally do something but they didn't you know so the reality is they're letting their currency crash and every time they speak, they get a little correction, but it doesn't hold because there's no reality. They're buying their bond market, so you can't buy the bond market and support your currency at the same time. Yeah, and yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, and yeah, that was I think it was September 22nd, pulling the chart almost a month ago. It's crazy how time mm -hmm. flies. And since then, uh, one day of red, three more days of red, everything else green since then, September 22nd on a daily basis on the mm -hmm. dollar yen. Uh, we got a question, Teddy. We got a caller. Sure. All right, let's jump Great. to our caller. We got a caller, Jeff from Philly. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'll try not to take too much time. A uh, quick question for uh, Teddy, please. Uh, what Go I want to ask Thanks. is, uh, suppose that you've been trading FX using futures uh, for a few years, but you're going to be, uh, but let's say that you switch or you need to switch to um, trading FX in the cash market as opposed to the futures. Would you, I noticed that the cash market seems to be a lot more spiky than the futures market. 
And my question is, would you trade, uh, I'm a pattern trader, would you trade any differently the cash market than the futures market? As, you know, as far as the price action, like, in other words, maybe keep uh, wider stops or, you know, would, uh -huh. would you trade it any differently? That's a fantastic question. Um, there's a big difference between trading the cash market and the futures market. Um, first of all, as you do liquidity issues. Uh, in the cash, you definitely have much more liquidity than you do in the futures. Um, there's also, you have rollovers that you have to deal with when you're trading that, you know, because there's always the front month. So, you know, you have March, September, December, and, uh, and June, you know. So those time periods around rollover, you have to be very cautious about your position and whether and how you roll that position because of the spreads. Um, I'll tell you so what, Teddy, can you hang on yeah. one second? All right, sure. hang with us. Jeff, hang with us, all right? Because that's sure, a great we'll question. Jeff's question then. We'll come right back and we'll jump right back into it. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 21 points. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And don't forget, folks, check out on the front page of TFNN, the Tiger Forex Report. You get the newsletter for a month. You get a webinar coming up a week from today. It should be an outstanding education. Check it out. Please sign up. And we'll jump back into it. We're talking to our man, Jeff, from Philly. And go for it, Teddy. You were just talking about some of the differences between futures uh, sure. and the cash. 
Okay, great question from Jeff. Uh, so to get back to his point, especially he says uh, he says he trades patterns. Um, the difference between futures and forex can be a great, sign greatly significant when it comes to your type of trading. Um, I mentioned the rollovers and expirations. If you're in around the expiration months, like basically like for June expiration, if you were between May, middle of May and middle of June, you probably, if you had a pattern that was a buy or sell signal that's going to last for a week or two, you would rather be in the cash markets, okay? In the futures markets, if it's not during the rolls, and the reason I say that is because you'd have to flip your contract. So let's say you're long, okay, in a position and you're going into rollover. Depending on if the spread widens out or in, you may, when you flip explain you have to get get out of one contract and get you know basically sell out of your one long and then buy into net the future the next front month that spread could cost you money on your trade so you may be right on the long position but because you have to roll the contract in the middle of that position you may not see as much of a profit as you would you may see more it depends on how the spreads moving um, now the other thing is like for the FX markets like for instance me I've been long the US dollar yen for over 14 15 months great to be long and to have that trade on the only thing is i've been paying interest for 14 15 months so especially during sideways periods that definitely even if i'm not losing money technically on the price i am losing money on the on the account balance because of the interest payment okay so those are factors you want to take in if you're doing a really long-term position FX is pro the FX cash is probably the way to go, but you have to be mindful of your interest payments. Um, and the futures, except for during rollovers, that can be actually a much more um, lucrative way to trade the, those moves. So absolutely great question. I well, Jeff, helps, yeah. thank you so much for the call and calling in, man. We appreciate it. Teddy, yeah. thank you so much, Join man. Join we'll on Wednesday, Jeff. We'll <laughs> talk to you Wednesday, and I look forward to the webinar next week, Teddy, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. Folks, see you next week. check out Teddy's webinar on the front page of TFN. And our man Basil Chapman's up next. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.